Hi, Coach. It's Albie Kong. How are you? Good, Albie. How are you? Good. Quick question about where things are right now as far as, you know, you nothing's set in stone. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of cancellations, a lot of, you know, this whole situation is fluid. How difficult does that make you uh, make you uh, in your daily preparations and daily practice? Well, for us, mo mostly the brunt's over because most of our guys have tested, um, you know, positive already. So our hardest days are behind us because, you know, we don't have as much quarantining now. We've been negative for about two weeks. You know, the hardest part before was just getting them ready to play and just we're still we're still fighting the remnants of conditioning, knowledge. And, you know, just our young guys, you know, just getting game ready, really. That, that's been the hardest thing for me is it's nothing's normal. OK, thank you. Appreciate you. Keith, how much uh, speaking of being normal? Good. You know, last week, obviously, you look at your roster with three starters down. Where are you at with Sincere and Maceo kind of communicating with them? Has anything changed over the last couple of days? Well, I think Maceo is going to come back unless I'm wrong, which I haven't been right much so far this, this year. But I, th I think he'll be back. I don't think Sincere will be back. But he has not entered the transfer portal yet. No, Sincere's in the portal. Oh, yeah, okay. Maceo is not. Keith, how have some of the older guys on the team, like Marcus and, and Mike, who have played with Sincere for multiple seasons now, been reacting to this? It can't be easy for them. They're, the one thing I'll tell you about young people today is they're more resilient than the old people. They don't take things as personally. Um, you know, they're they're more day by day than than kind of like, you know, people like us. You know, and uh, you know, all we try to stress with with people now is just commitment. You know, like look up Denzel Washington's uh, tweet, his last tweet. It's a very interesting tweet, and I think he hit it right on the head. Keith, can you, is there anything you can tell us about um, communications or conversations with Maceo uh, Lamar or for Sincere as to the decisions that they made? Uh, I understand Maceo is 100%. Like I, I, get, I get his deal completely. Um, I Even to some extent, I get Lamar's. You know, just wanted a bigger role. You know, wanted to handle the ball more. Just felt like he really couldn't get what he wanted here. I mean, Sincere's on the other hand, I I just think it's just straight unhappiness, just not very happy. You know, we we all choose to be happy or unhappy, right? Like ultimately you, you, when you're on the 50 yard line, you know, you can, you can go to work and be happy or you can go to work and be unhappy, right? But we, we all control our own happiness to some extent, right? Cause I know I'm on that crossroad a bunch. <laughs> he just wasn't very happy for a long period of time. And if you're that unhappy, then you gotta make a change. When, uh, or, you when he, fight, or you got to fight through it, right? Was it unhappiness with role, playing time, uh, the state of the team? I mean, when, when you say unhappy, what did he express unhappiness about? Well, he, he really didn't express it. I mean, but ultimately, it can't be playing time and it can't be role for him, right? That's He basically had the keys to the car and could do anything he wanted for the most part. So is he looking for brighter so it lights? Be, it must be unhappiness with me or the team or the circumstances. Is he looking for brighter, I mean, lights, brighter lights, bigger city kind of thing? Is, is that it? No, I don't think so. I don't no. think – like he's capable of playing at 
most levels, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think you'll see him in the MAC. But I'm just surmising. I don't really know. Do you sort of find that um, there's a tipping point at any any point with some of the guys who wanted to step away? Was it like when you were, when you brought Ryan in or anything like that? Was was there a definitive time where some of this changed? Their numbers are bad. I mean, like you know, just like our numbers are three and three. Like you know, they had a rough start. Like right there. There's one thing about basketball, the numbers don't lie, right? So, like, like what I try to tell them is, look, how can you be happy? Like, I, I'm not happy, right? I'm not happy three and three. So how can you be happy when you're not shooting the numbers you usually shoot or you're not, you know, your assist to turnover is not where it usually is? Like, of course you're not going to be happy. It's how you choose to... It's how you choose to get through that situation, right? Like, was he blaming his numbers on the team? Or, or was that the base of his unhappiness, maybe? I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, obviously, he's not happy with the team, right? Or, he, or he'd still be here. I, I think that's something you can you know, deductive thinking lead, leads you in that direction, correct? Either he's not happy with the coach, he's not happy with the team, he's not happy with the situation, right? Or he's just not happy, period, for whatever reason. There's no other, there's no other explanation. It's not playing time. Coach, um, didn't ask you this um, after the game, but um, you had several players kneel, several players didn't before with the national anthem. What did you think about that and about some guys doing it, some guys not doing it? Um, that's a that's a really really good question. Um, so obviously, I'm a I'm a First Amendment guy. I'm educated. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in people's rights uh, for choice. I under I understand completely. I understand completely why some guys want to kneel, and I also understand why some people don't want to kneel. So, I respect the fact that they have an opinion and they acted on their opinion. And I always I'll always be like that. I don't have to agree, disagree whatever, but I think people in this country, that's what this country was built on, have the right, have the freedom of choice. Is that a good answer? That's just me personally. I, again, I, I have my own opinions, but I, I don't talk politics or religion. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, I, again, I use LeBron as an example. That's why I respect LeBron. He's not afraid to state his opinion regardless of the circumstance. Most people are afraid. Keith, for you, you played, Dre got to see some extra run. Uh, just how do you see him moving forward with this team, with this rotation? What are your ideal plans for him? I feel like uh, Dre Harris made a big jump in the last week, and it's all between his ears. He finally quit fighting it. He finally quit blaming me, our coaching staff, his opportunity, and he, st and he went back to work and practice. And uh, I think he can be a good player. I think all those guys can be good players. I really do. I think, you know, while, again, like we got hit in the mouth pretty good, we, thank goodness we have pretty good depth. And, you know, we're capable of surviving it. I really believe that. Now, it's not going to be easy. And uh, the circumstances make it more difficult. But, but I believe in the guys we have in the locker room. I believe we can win. With the conversations with him or with seeing this, what do you think in his mind, not necessarily speaking for him, flip that switch? 
I mean, at some point you got to either, you, you, you either got to believe what people are telling you or you, you, you got to leave, right? Like there's no agenda here. Look, we got two guys to play in the NBA. You know, we got Ashton Gibbs who played at a high level European. Every guy on my staff played for me other than Ashton. I mean, I, I'm coaching them just like I coach the guys on my staff and probably a little softer than I did them. So we don't have an agenda. We just want guys to be successful players, human beings, and students. And we built our whole career on, on relationships, you know, and, and I still believe that, I still believe that relationship building is the key you know, some guys don't want relationships anymore because it's easier for them not to be all in. But I think Drace flipped the switch and said, hey, enough is enough. And, 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 and also, he's got an unbelievable great mom. He's got an unbelievable mom who, you know, stood by the process. Keith, what kind of team are you now with sincere out of the mix Lamar out of the neck out of the mix and whenever we see uh Maceo back until Maceo comes back like what what changes about the makeup of the team now and, and how you view yourselves how are you different so that's a good question and quite honestly um you know we have less maybe a little less ability to create off the ball screen you know what I mean like sincere is really good at like getting when he wanted to getting guys involved and creating opportunities for others. Um, we're a little bit bigger. We're a little bit bigger, you know, on the wings and we, sh we showed we could defend. We're going to have to be a defensive oriented team to grind out wins. And then we're at, we're going to have to be a little more, uh, a little bit more precise in our, our ability offensively. And then we need Marcus and Mike to play. Like my, Marcus and Mike have to be more dominant if we're going to win. The young guys are going to be all right, you know. And then we got to make some shots. Obviously, you can't you can't shoot it like that and really win. But every game, like even even the Davidson game, we we were right there to win all four games. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll, we'll develop though. I think. Well, we can't be Tavian will continue at point guard, I assume. But you, you, who, who would back him up? Well, Tyson Acuff right now, who we think is going to be a good player. You know, uh, <clears throat> he's got a good attitude. He works hard every day. He's learning. But we think he can be a good player. Church, how much does um, playing at La Roche get into guys' heads? I, I, I know it's not necessarily making an excuse, but – if you think you don't think you're going to shoot well at a place, how does that like get in your head? How do you work around that? Um, well, we need to get out there probably a little bit. You know, I think that's the first thing we need to probably take a day or two and go out there and shoot on the rims. Um, I don't know. I really don't believe in all that. I think it just, the women threw it in pretty good the other night. So maybe it's a, a female male thing or something. I don't know. Like it should be a good shooting gym as, as small a place as it is. It's usually the big arenas that are harder to shoot in. So I think last year against Columbia, we shot it pretty good, but we, I don't know. We just haven't been able to make anything, but psychologically I'm one of those guys that never talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it to our team. It's like a guy that misses free throws. What good does it do to talk to him about it? Just leave him alone and let him shoot him. Hey Keith, how, how had Maceo been coping over this past year and, um, you know, ever since he lost his sister? How, how has he been doing? And did um, the concerns that cropped up recently surprise you? Did it have to do with, like, close to the anniversary? Or what What, what kicked in there, do you think? Um, you know, that's kind of a private matter, Tim. Like, I, I really want to protect him because I really like him. But obviously, he's got a lot on a plate for a young person. And I feel for him. And that's that's 
really more important than anything we're doing is it's our obligation to make sure that we we help him through his difficult times because we've got some guys in our program that have been through some things that no one should have to go through. So um, <clears throat> if I lose because I'm compassionate, then that's fine. I'm good with that. I'm not going to – I'm not changing on that. And I, I like Macy Austin. I'm not going to lie. I, I like him. And I think he's a sweetheart, and I think he's been through some tough times that no young person should have to go through. Keith, the game itself, your team itself, it kind of resembles a puzzle at times, sometimes more complex than others. Just how has it been putting these pieces together, especially since you've had some trouble pieces in various ways, shutdowns, departures, whatever the case may be? So the good thing about me is I've coached in high school. <clears throat> I've coached in the NAIA. I've coached Division Two. I've coached in Division One in the mid-level. So I've coached at almost every level. So I've had to coach in a variety of different ways uh, with a bunch of different types of teams. You know, I've had a bunch of little guys. I've had a bunch of big guys. I know what way I really want to play but I'm capable of making adjustments. If we have good enough players, which, you know, ultimately that decides whether you win or lose. I'm good enough coach. I think I've been around long enough that I can change gears at any time and adapt to the players that I have. Keith, is, is it a big deal or not that teams like Dayton have played uh, more games than you and against a couple of SEC teams? Uh, and, and you haven't played as many games. Is that something that might matter coming up? I think it matters. I mean, I think probably other than other than you know losing the three guys, it's probably the most important thing. Maybe even more important than that is we haven't been able to play any games. We're just uh, we're just low mileage, right? So now your top nine or ten guys, what do you have? Four or five freshmen in there. Just low, that's just a low mileage team. And then you add not having games. But I don't want to sit here and sound like I'm making excuses. Like I refuse to do that. Um, regardless of the circumstances, my job is to make sure our guys believe they can win and they win somehow. So the last game, some people could say it was a poor game. I thought it was a great game because we came out on the, on the top end. Somehow, some way, something got us over the hump to win because we could have lost. Keith, uh, how do you? It wasn't a, good, it wasn't a pretty game, though. I, I'll give you that. When you talk to other coaches, um, you know, I don't know if you want to get on a soapbox here, but I'll offer one. When you talk to other coaches, uh, what are they saying about the transfer situation and how do you feel about it, the way the rules are currently set up? So I have kind of mixed feelings on the whole thing. And so my first thought is if, if other athletes are allowed to transfer and be immediately eligible, like my son who was a soccer player, if he's allowed to be immediately eligible, then our guys should be immediately eligible. So um, with that being said, I'm going to sound old here, right? I don't believe I don't believe in giving up on situations so quickly as the young people of today do. I don't I don't believe that not going as far as you can go before you have to leave is good for people. Now we have a 50% divorce rate in this country, right? For the very same reason. Right? We quit early, we give up. We don't fight. So I don't necessarily think the rule is good for people, but I think it should be there because coaches can leave, right? So I think it's, there's no choice really, but I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's good, but I think you have to do it. 
when you talked about Marcus and Michael needing to step up and be even more, do they want that or have they become comfortable being part of the team in the, in the manner that the team had been assembled? Like, do you see those guys wanting to uh, be dominant scorers more now, given the circumstances? Well, I think they're battling as well to get in better shape. You know, I think that's probably the biggest thing is like Mark, poor Marcus. And again, Poor Marcus wasn't here all spring or summer, really, because his mom was sick, right? So he's had his struggles because you can't miss that. And then, you know, with the COVID, you can't get in gyms. You can't. So he's been battling uphill all year, you know? And uh, I mean, it's it's one thing to want it, and then it's another thing to be physically able to do it. Those guys had great years last year. Right. I mean, so I think they want to do it. It's just physically that it's going to take them some time. That's all I got. We're going to keep fighting, though. I'll tell you that right now. I'll be very surprised if we don't keep fighting. So I, I still think we can have a good season. We just have to battle. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Keith. Take care. Now. Be, Keith, what's your travel uh, plans on Thursday? Whew. We didn't get any favors, did we? <laughs> so we we're we're doing it the hard way. We're gonna um, we're gonna bus to Dayton after this call at about one o'clock. We'll play the game at Dayton. Come home, uh, practice late Thursday, and then go in late to St. Bonaventure uh, Thursday night. So you'll get into St. Bonaventure pretty late then. Yeah, I'm guessing about maybe 11, 11.30. Oh, you had to sleep pretty quick for that Friday game, right? Uh, it's not an easy – it's not the easiest deal I've ever done. I mean, but – and they're good. You know, they're a good team now. They're, they're, they're very good. So it's all right. Look, the more we play, the better we're going to get. You know, we just got to keep finding ways to win. Whether and it's you like, the, you like the national TV exposure, I assume, right? You know, it's funny. I'm probably less on that ship than most people. I really am. Um, every game's on television now, right? Pretty much. You, and the, the problem with national TV exposure now is you flip through the channels and there's five games on, especially on Saturdays, right? Maybe Friday would be a little better. So I flip through and I say, oh, do I want to watch that? My, my friend's playing there. Do I want to watch that game or I'm not really going to watch that game? Or maybe I'll watch a couple at a time. Everybody's on television now. Like, does it really help you as far as get recruits and things? I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm just praying you get no snow. <laughs> you know? yeah, that, could, that could be a problem. No snow in Oleum, please. We've had some no, bad trips right. there now. We make a big thing out of the national TV broadcast. If though, if you want to find your team that you like, you can find them. It's not hard. It's not. Yeah, it's different now. Yeah, because you've got ES. Every game's on ESPN Plus or whatever, or ESPN three. Like, I, look at my son plays for Loudon United in the USL, right? And I can get every game. Think about that. Like, if they're putting those games on, are you kidding me? Like, think about it. No disrespect, Robbie. But Yeah, I'm not going to argue against you guys being on ESPN Plus so long as I get paid for it, Keith. So don't look hey, for an look, argument don't, for me. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, the USL is a great league. But most people aren't watching those games, right? Like, but I am. 